Metallica Monday on Chad Dukes versus the world. 800-636-1067 is my phone number. You can also tweet me, at Chad Dukes. I'll read those, even the bad ones. And, of course, Eric Watton is manning the controls at WatchChadDukes.com. There's cameras in here for some unknown reason. <laughs> it's another way for you to consume the program, although it's been a long weekend. Proceed at your own caution to watch me today. Um... Where is he? There he is. Uh, been on the show several times. Always enjoy catching up. Morning show host for 104.3 The Fan in Denver and anchor for CBS4 in Denver. The man wears two hats. Makes me feel bad about myself because I only have the one gig. Vic Lombardi is now on the Mitsubishi Electric Hitting Hotline. Vic, what's up, bud? What up, my man? How you doing? Good to catch up with you, dude. Um, first of all, just before we get to any of this stuff, how, I mean, we do this for a living, so it takes a lot for me to get my skirt blown up when it comes to sports. I just thought it was a tremendous weekend of games and I, I just thought that especially the New England Baltimore game and just everything that took place it it really kind of just shows why the NFL is on the level that it's at as far as just providing great television and the ratings reflect that and who would have known that the only home team to lose would be the 8-0 Denver Broncos who were uh, pretty much damn unbeatable at home yeah. and yet they couldn't get it done they couldn't. They started to show signs of it towards the second half of the season, or at least Peyton Manning did, and we heard, oh, they're, they're turning into a running game, and then people are saying, well, maybe they're compensating for something going on with Manning. Talk with me about this, quote-unquote, torn uh, quadricep and why that wasn't divulged and, and how much that should have been and then how much it actually, you think, affected his play. Well, I don't want to get too much into the semantics, but when you hear, let me just ask a common sports fan, if I tell you, Hey, dude, I, I tore my quad. What are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking you're not going to play that weekend, most likely. Exactly. I mean, let alone walk, right? right, right. You know, you, you tear something, you're down, dude. You, you're not playing in the National Football League. So there's a dispute on the diagnosis of what a tear is. Now, I know there are a lot of people out there who are going to say, well, a strain is a tear. Okay, yeah, yeah, a strain is a tear. The strain a, a strain is a tear of the fibers and the muscle. But when people talk torn quads, they're thinking that thing is ruptured, it's off the bone, you're not playing. That was not the case with Peyton Manning. He suffered a, a strain, and he played with it. He played despite, he played the same game he suffered the tear, so-called. So I don't know how far we can take this. I know the Broncos uh, aren't too happy with the diagnosis that's sent out today because it makes it sound like they didn't do their jobs. Um, and I know Peyton Manning did play hurt. We saw him play hurt. He was obviously hurt. But the extent of the injury uh, remains a little blurry. All right. Um, you know, you're looking at a situation here where there's a lot of variables, not just Manning, Vic. For people that aren't aired in the epicenter, who else could be leaving? Who else is a candidate to get a head coaching job someplace else? What is some of the turmoil and change that could take place that has nothing to do with the quarterback? There are a lot of moving parts, and some of them have a lot to do with the quarterback based on, you know, can they coexist, Fox and Peyton Manning for another season. Does this team have another Super Bowl run in it with the two pieces in place, the two major pieces, the quarterback and the head coach? A lot of people aren't sure of that. Uh, Adam Gase, the offensive coordinator, most suspect he'll get one of these head coaching gigs. Jack Del Rio, the defensive coordinator, is headed to Oakland tomorrow for his second interview for that job. He's the favorite to land the head coaching gig there. And then you've got about nine or ten free agents who are up in the air. Uh, Wes Welker, unlikely to return. Julius Thomas is a free agent. Demarius Thomas is a free agent. He'll probably get franchised. There's a, a bevy of different uh, role players on the team. So this is a major turning point for this franchise. I, I'm not saying that everything falls apart, but certainly not the same team that came into this season as a Super Bowl favorite. I don't know what to call it next year. That Vic Lombardi. Give him a follow for all things Denver. He hosts radio out there, 104.3 The Fan, and also CBS4 in Denver, Colorado. All right, um, well, let's talk about Manning. Uh, his He said something to the effect of he, he wanted to come back, but also circumstances had changed, and so he's going to have to reassess. Is it 50-50? Does anybody have a gut out there? Are there any early indicators as to what he might think? You know, I think it is 50-50. One day I'm leaning return, and then next hour I'm leaning won't. Uh, a lot of it's going to have to do with how he rehabs, I think, here in the next few days, few weeks. He's never going to be a guy that's going to make a snap decision based on how the season ended. I think he's going to let this one uh, brew for a while before he, he decides what he's going to do with his career. I know deep down he wants to play. You know, he loves the game. He loves being around the locker room and all that business. But 
if he's not going to be able to play at his level, at his standard, why bother? Okay. Um, if he doesn't play, and it's, I guess it's the Brock Osweiler show, uh, what type of a step back in the, is this? We know all the big names that were brought in this offseason, Vic. I mean, they were loaded up and ready to go win a championship with an early exit like this. Uh, if Manning doesn't come back, what are we looking at in the Denver Broncos? That's a great question. We have really no idea what to expect of Brock Osweiler out here. Hmm. We've never seen him in a critical situation ever. He hasn't taken many snaps as a quarterback. And I guess it speaks volumes of, of what they think of his status and his availability. When, when Peyton Manning did hurt himself in the San Diego game a month ago, and some might think, well, okay, if you're hurt, let's take a couple weeks, let's heal that up and get you ready for the playoffs. They chose not to do that and play Manning, an injured Manning, ahead of a healthy Brock Osweiler. So you could look at it both ways, but truly we have no idea what to expect from that position. Does it? What's the narrative there, Vic, from your callers, just from fans in general, that it was Andrew Luck that came in and, and may have put that, you know, for lack of a better cliche, the nail in the coffin of Peyton Manning's career? Well, it, it was certainly a tough loss to absorb because you beat that team in the season opener. Yeah. Uh, I think the Denver Broncos know they're better than Indy. I mean, that what hurts more, more than anything is Indy's got a very mediocre defense. Nobody's going to look at that defense and say the world beaters and the Broncos were only able to put up 13 points. I mean, that's ridiculous, to be honest with you. Uh, defensively, it's a defense that was ranked third in the NFL, the Broncos defense, five pro bowlers, and at times, Andrew Luck did as he pleased. So there's issues on both sides of the ball. There's no doubt about it. That's why these stats, man, everybody gets in, oh, third-ranked defense, fourth-ranked offense. Nobody cares, man. Nobody cares how you win. It's great players making plays when the game and the season is on the line. And that's what we saw out of Andrew Luck. Okay, so if let's just say Peyton does come, I mean, are we are we talking about John Foxman? How many things are contingent on whether or not Manning wants to play? I'd have to assume that their course of action will be drastically different if they have to make a change of quarterback. I think the number one thing is how quickly he can heal. If he feels that okay, this was just a fluke, an aberration, and you know, everybody gets hurt. Or if it's a product of just his aging body. You know, the older you get, the, the more readily hurt you get. Yeah. It's just the way it is. Yeah, I've, noticed, I've noticed but, that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so if he if he's sure that, okay, this is just sort of like an Aaron Rodgers type fluky thing, then great. He's going to come back and play another year. That's number one. But if he believes that this is just part of the aging process, I, I think he's going to cash in his chips. I don't, I don't know what, what other choice he has here to come back and go through that again and if you don't have Super Bowl aspirations in this town and with this team and playing under John Elway, I don't think they want to really bother, to be honest with you. If, you. if you bother to go through the motions, then you're just chasing stats and chasing records, and nobody wants a part of that. Vic, what, what's your opinion on it? I'd have to think that for people to say, oh, he's just injured, he's, just, he's, he's had a drastic injury. Uh, he is, you know, he's much older in his career. I just... I, I, Father Time is undefeated. I can't believe that more people aren't sitting here and, and realistically adjusting their expectations and saying there's no chance this guy's going to be the quarterback he once was. Yeah, I, I don't see the injury, the news coming out today. In fact, I called it. I said it yesterday. I said, I guarantee you this after the game, some report will come out that whatever injury they were masking, they're going to make it sound like it was bigger than what it really is. And the mm. bottom line is that he played. We saw him play. We saw him move. We saw him move around in the pocket. Now, he's never been a fast guy. He's not a cheetah back there, but he moved enough to get the job done. It was third and five in the opening series of the second half. He was rolling to his right. He had 20 yards of real estate in front of him. A baby could have crawled to the first down marker, <laughs> but he chose to throw the ball. And to me, that was emblematic of this whole deal. He just can't get his body to do what it once did, whether you're injured or not. I just don't see him fixing that yeah I agree and I think that you saw Tom Brady who is about the goofiest runner I've ever seen I don't know how someone can be I think such an incredible quarterback and look so unathletic when they're running you saw him take the football and run into the end zone and score a touchdown because it was there and I understand that Peyton Manning probably doesn't want to get hit he doesn't want to get hurt at this stage in his career but if if you can't make that play that you just described well then maybe you don't have any business playing the position. I, I don't know if that's too severe, but that's the way that I sound. It, it sounded yeah, to me. Yeah, and it sounds severe, man, and it sounds cruel and all that, but facts are facts. And I think he'll have that conversation with himself. He'll look at the tape, and we all know that, obviously, the Peyton Manning 
apologist, and I hate to sound like I'm bashing him because I'm not. I really respect everything he's meant to the game in this city. But the bottom line is you got to know when is when. And I think when he looks at the tape and assesses his performance, he may come to an understanding that, listen, this is not just a fluky thing. My body just not going to be able to hold up anymore. Yeah, and I think that's something that everybody goes through. Nobody would hold it against him. His legacy, Vic, so much is mentioned of it. So, so many people debate it. In your mind, first of all, how will his time in Denver be viewed? And then secondly, you know, he's got a Super Bowl. He has lost a bunch of playoff games, but he is a champion. We're not talking about Jim Kelly here. No disrespect to him. How do you think people will view his career if his time in the NFL is over? Well, all I can tell you is how I view his career. I I consider him the smartest quarterback to ever play the game. In terms of the pure intelligence, a beautiful mind, Nobody prepared better, and I'm listen to us. We're talking to him in the past tense already, <laughs> but nobody prepared more and and was more quick opponent than Peyton Manning. Is he the greatest of all time? No, that's yeah. You know, we had another quarterback in this town, John Elway, who just made plays when games were on the line and was able to do it athletically as well as um, intelligently. And and I think there's something to be said about that. When a play breaks down, what else you got? Can, can you do something else? And I think that's the one thing Peyton didn't have. Nothing against him. It's just the one thing he lacked. He had a lot of everything else, though. So um, God bless him no matter what he decides. He'll certainly have a bevy of jobs at his disposal, whatever he decides to do next. It's uh, it's at Vic Lombardi. Give him a follow. Always a pleasure talking shop with you, sir. Thank you very much. All right, brother. Take care. Yeah, man, you too. Uh, 104.3 The Fan out there in Denver at Vic Lombardi. Give him a follow. Stephen Godfrey is going to join me, senior reporter for SB Nation. At 3.30, uh, I, I'll tell you what, if you're a football fan, this is it's Christmas. Tonight, you got the national championship game. First time in a playoff. Can't wait for that. Oregon and Ohio State facing off. A lot of people today on this very station saying that Urban Meyer is the best coach in college football. I asked Stephen what he thinks about that assessment. LeVar Arrington for a full hour, 4 to 5. It's Chad Dukes versus the world.